Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to the degree of operating leverage, this time looking at an alternative formula than the ones we have seen in the past to basically get to the same point to get to the degree of operating leverage. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in Excel. We're going to have our information up top. We're going to put that into the blue area down below and to the right. We're going to be focusing in on the degree of operating leverage, this time concentrating in on an alternative method to calculate it, that being the percent change in operating income, percent change in sales. Why might you use a, a different method? You may not have all the information to do the, to do the calculation as we have been doing up top. In other words, if you're internal to the company, most likely then, you may be breaking down your information both in terms of a standard income statement, including sales minus cost of goods sold equals the gross profit and so on, and also reformat it in the format of a contribution margin income statement for projection purposes, sales minus variable cost equals contribution margin and so on. But if you're external to the company, you're only going to have the financial statements that will be given uh, to you that are going to be public financial statements in the format of a standard income statement, sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit and so on. So it might be easier then to try to try to figure out the degree of operating leverage using an, uh, some alternative methods. In a test question, of course, they may only give you certain information. So you need to know it for test purposes in both ways, uh, possibly as well, depending on the test you're taking. So we're going to be looking at this now. we got our information up top. I'm going to basically reformat this information into a contribution margin type of income statement. And then we'll pull our numbers from it, calculating this, uh, this calculation a few different ways. So we're going to do our contribution margin income statement, starting with the sales for year one, year two, and then we'll compare them. So year one sales, we have the 405,000. Year two sales, we're going to take the 495,000. We're then going to have the variable, variable costs, variable costs. We're going to say this is going to be equal to, they gave us the total variable cost. So we're going to say the 180,000 for year one and the uh, 220,000 for year two. Let's put an underline between these two or under these two by going to the home tab font group and underline because that's going to give us our total of the contribution margin which is going to be equal to the 405,000 minus the 180,000. Let's copy and paste that formula over. I'm going to select control C on the keyboard, click the arrow to the right, control V, pasting that over, double clicking on it, make sure it does what we think it should. It does look like it's doing what it should be doing. So now we're going to go into the fixed cost, fixed cost, which is going to be given to us in the data up top at the 75,000 for both year one and year two it being uh, fixed and then we have the operating income that's where we're going to stop here we're not going to go on to uh to the interest or the taxes we're going to stop it right here this is going to be then the contribution margin minus the fixed costs let's copy that formula control c right arrow once control v pasting it double clicking on it check it out does it do what we expect it to it does good and then we're going to underline under the fixed cost, go into the home tab, font group, underline. Then we'll take our difference column. We're going to be subtracting year two minus year one to see what the difference is on each line item. So we're going to say this will equal the year two sales minus the year one uh, sales. So the 495 minus the 405 gives us 90. Let's copy that on down using our fill handle, putting our cursor on the fill handle, dragging on down. There we have it. Now we're going to do our percentage increase or decrease where we take the change divided by the prior year. That's how you always think about the percentage increase and decrease. So year over year, increase or decrease, then the percentage increase, decrease, change divided by the prior year. So we're going to be taking the change then divided by the prior year, the first year in our calculation and enter. And then let's make that a percentage by going to the home tab, number group, percentifying it. And then we're going to add some decimals. That's not actually a word, but I kind of think it should be. So I use it sometimes. Percentified it. We percentified it. So then we're going to go down. We're going to copy that down. I'm going to use the autofill handle and just drag this on down. And there we have that. Let's add some underlines. I'm going to add an underline uh, here by going to the home tab, 
and uh, the font and underline that because the 90,000 minus the 40,000 is also, also a difference or change of the 50,000. The 50,000 minus zero underline home tab font group underline is also 50,000. So now let's do our calculation. We want to think about the percent change in operating income divided by the percent change in sales. We're going to use our kind of tax return type of format. I want the ending column to have those two numbers, the numerator and the denominator, percent change in operating income and the percent change in sales. So we're going to start off calculating then the percent uh, change in operating income. I'm going to recalculate it, even though we kind of did the calculation over here already. We'll recalculate it again in kind of like a vertical fashion. So we're going to take a percent change, once again, second period minus the first period, That'll give us the change divided by the first period. So that'll look like this in a vertical fashion. Year two oper let, let's see. Operating operating income is gonna be equal to year two operating income is that two hundred thousand. And then we're gonna compare that or subtract out year one operating income which is going to be that uh, the 150 that's going to give us our change our change in operating income the delta the triangle the change the 200,000 minus the 150,000 and then so if you want to sound cool you say it's the delta it's the delta of the okay anyway font underline then we're going to compare that to year one I'm going to say equals the year one operating income and that's going to be the same number. That's going to be the 150,000. And then I'll put an underline here, home tab, font group, and underline. And that's going to give us our percent uh, change in operating income. I'm just going to get rid of the uh, colon at the end here. Then we're going to divide this out. I'm going to put this in the outer column because this is like what we were looking for. This is the bottom line that we were looking for here. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 50,000 divided by the 150,000. And then we'll percentify this. So we're going to go to the home tab, numbers group, percenting, percentify it, or add some decimals for it as well. Now let's uh, indent this. Let's do some formatting, holding, uh, selecting these cells, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting, selecting this cell, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting there. So we basically did the same calculation we did in a horizontal fashion here. Now in a vertical fashion, once again, percentage increase and decrease calculated as year two minus year one. That gives us the change. Change divided by the first year. That give us, gives us our percentage increase or decrease. Let's do the same thing for the percent uh, change in sales, which is our denominator. So now we're going to do our denominator. Same kind of calculation. We're going to say let's pick up uh, year two revenue or sales we can call it sales and that's going to be equal to the top line of our income statement the 495,000 and then we've got year one sales which is going to be equal to the year one number over to over there and that's going to give us our change change in sales which is the difference equals the 195 or the 495 minus the 405 ninety thousand dollar difference just as we see here let's put an underline home tab font group and underline there and then we're going to compare this to the year one number year one sales which once again was out 405 thousand let's put an underline here go into the home tab font group and underline and then we're going to say this is going to be our what we wanted to calculate the percent change in sales we'll put that in the outer column because this is where we wanted to get to that's going to be the ninety thousand divided by the four or five thousand let's make that a percent percentify it go into the home tab number group percenting it and add a couple decimals for it as well while we're here we might as well put some underline on it too so we're going to go to the home tab font group underline as well a lot of stuff there so we're going to say this is going to be then the degree of operating leverage then will be equal to the 33.33 percent divided by the change in um in the sales two but we'll then add some decimals 
home tab number group we could add more decimals we we tend to stop at two and that's all we need because it's nice and even this time so we're at the uh, one uh, point five one point five so there we have that so that's another way we can calculate that this degree of operating leverage let's just look at a couple different alternatives including the, what we've seen in the past so let's um, format this first I'm going to select these items home tab alignment increase in denting select this item home tab alignment increase in denting there now we can do this whole calculation the same way and you might see in a book problem they might not give you like the sales number they might give you maybe the change in um, revenue and the change in the units and the units that were sold and because we're the the revenue is going to change in relation to the units sold we should get this same ratio if given that information so to prove that just to look at that i'm going to copy over this in the same thing and then i want to be able to just adjust it adjusting basically this portion of it to add the the unit sales uh as opposed to the total sales number so to do that i want to be able to cut everything over here that comes from our data I would like to be able to copy over anything that's going to be internal to our form. I don't want to do anything to it. I want the related form, related format to copy over. So that means I'm going to make an absolute reference to every cell that is coming from our data set over to the left. So if I double click on this item, this is coming from the data set over to the left. So I'm going to select F4 in the keyboard, put in a dollar sign before the D and the 15. Double clicking on this one, I need to make that an absolute reference. I'm going to select F4, putting the dollar sign before the C and the 15. This one is internal to the to the form, so I'm going to leave it alone. This one is coming from our, our information to the left, so I'm going to put a dollar sign before the J and the 4 by selecting F4. This one is internal to the form, so I'm not going to do anything to that one. This one is coming from our data set, so I'm going to select F4, putting a dollar sign before the D and the 11. Double clicking on this one, this one's coming from the from our data set therefore i'm going to select f4 putting the dollar sign before the c and the 11. this one is all internal not going to do anything to it this one is coming from and this one is internal as well because it's picking it up up here that's nice leaving it alone this one then internal leaving it alone this one then internal leaving it alone then i'm going to basically copy this whole thing now some of these references over here may be referenced as well so typically i'll use a formula to pick over the uh the names and then format paint it to get the little indentations so i'm going to say this will be equal to this item enter and then i'm going to use the form then i'm going to use the auto fill to drag this down auto fill this all the way down there we have it then we'll use the format painter to paint brush it but before doing that i'm going to copy over the numbers so i'm going to copy all the number area like this part right click and copy it and then i'm going to put that in in nine right click and paste it there paste it normal then i'm going to use the format painter to format paint this thing so i get the little indentations that we want so i'm going to select this entire thing go to the home tab clipboard format painter paintbrush and then just paintbrush this thing and now it's looking formatted properly now we want to change these items instead of having total total revenue i'm going to pretend that we could do the same calculation if we just have the units because we'll have the same kind of comparison we should get to the same ratio so i'm going to delete this entire thing let's hide these cells right here so we can have our data right next to where we're going to do the calculations putting our cursor on i to l so we're going to put our cursor on i to l to hide these cells so it's on ill so we're going to hide ill because we don't want to be ill we're going to right click on it we're going to hide those uh, items and then we're just going to recalculate down here unless ill is like a good thing that's ill maybe that's like good but i don't know anyways we're going to say this is the year uh two unit sold units let's say units sold and that's going to be equal to the uh 110,000 it tells us we're going to compare that to the year one units sold which are going to be the 90,000 and the change so then we have the change in units sold which is going to be the 110 minus the 90 for the 20,000 
and that's going to give us then our uh, pers uh or no we're going to compare that then to the year one unit sold which is once again the 90 and then we have our percent change not in sales but we have the the percent change in uh units sold which should be changed up here this too should be percent change in units sold that's what we're trying to calculate right so that and and notice the the percent change in units sold is still going to come out to that 22 percent which is the same thing we came out when we did the change in sales because the relationship between the units we're selling should be the same given the fact that we're selling them all you know at the same unit price so if we're given that instead then we can use that in the denominator so we have the change in sales if we're only given the units then we could take the change in the units and we should still come up to that per same percentage which will then come up to the same bottom line degree of operating leverage at the 1.5 all right lastly let's do this the old way just to prove that this this works now we're gonna have to use the year one data to kind of work this because notice we did a change thing which is like needs two sets of data we're gonna we're gonna calculate this basically on the first set of data so that we use our old formula up top which is the contribution margin mi divided by the operating income or contribution margin divided by the contribution margin minus the cost of currently <laughs> fixed costs okay so let's hide these cells i'm going to hide from m to p fr from moop mop and then i'm going to hide those so we got the side by side comparison once again and we're going to we're going to now do our our calculation let's make this a little smaller where we're going to take uh the the top is going to be the contribution margin so let's calculate the uh the contribution margin we'll do it the old way and, and the way we've done it we have the contribution margin like right here but let's break it out into into the way we've seen it before into this formula so we could just pick up this number this contribution number here but let's break it out to the, and so we can figure out what the unit price and the unit cost is given the data that we have so we'll calculate the contribution margin and we're going to use this formula up top and try to figure it out so we need to figure out the price and the variable cost and multiply that times x which is the units that we sold so the units uh, sold we know that that was ninety thousand. that's the ninety thousand. we're picking up the year one numbers and then we're going to calculate the contribution margin per unit and that's going to be the unit price and the unit cost let's say variable cost and that's going to give us our contribution margin per unit now we weren't given this in our data uh we weren't we weren't exactly given this information over here you might say but uh we do know that the that the units were this and the revenue is that so we should be able to divide those out and and figure out what it should be so this should then be then the 405 divided by the units that means the cost per unit is five is that even let's check it out home tab numbers add some decimals it's really uh 450 450 unit that's the price that we sell them for and then the unit variable cost we don't have that either but we do have the total variable cost and once again the units so we can divide those two out and we should be able to figure it out by dividing it out so the 180,000 divided by the units of the 90 then if we add some decimals home tab numbers group add in a few decimals two dollars let's go ahead and underline this home tab font group underline then we can subtract this out to give us the contribution margin per unit which is the 450 minus the two otherwise known as three let's add some decimals there home tab numbers decimals it's really 2.5 let's put an underline there while we're here home tab font group and underline then uh let's format this thing so uh, let's go ahead and well let's do the last part first we'll say contribution margin let's do the last part first is that normal anyway we're going to say this is going to be equal then to the ninety thousand times the contribution margin per unit and we get the two twenty five thousand now let's do our indentation now that we did the last part first and we're going to select these items 
go to the home tab alignment increase the indenting and then i'm going to uh, increase the indenting for these two home tab alignment increase the indenting and then this one home tab alignment increase the indenting so that's our numerator now let's calculate the denominator which is either the contribution mark or either the operating income you could think of it or the contrib or the contribution margin minus the fixed costs which is usually operating income we already have it here but let's do the little calculation for it that we typically would do if we had the contribution margin we could take the contribution margin here and that would be then the uh, the 225,000 uh, oh, we already calculated it right there and then the fixed costs so the fixed costs let's pick that up here and that's going to be equal to the fixed costs of 75,000 put the underline there uh, also well let's put the underline there and then we're saying that this is going to be the contribution margin minus the fixed costs so let's get rid of the colon so colon get rid of that and then we'll subtract this out this is going to be the 225 minus the 75 to give us the 150 and once again you, you might calculate this uh, a few different ways this is the operating uh, income which you might be given in a multi-step type of income statement otherwise you might you know have to back into it you might be going from net income and back in uh, into it in that format or you might go this way contribution margin minus the fixed costs so then we're going to select these three items i'm going to go to the home tab alignment increase the indenting select this one home tab alignment increase the indenting and finally we're going to calculate the degree of operating leverage and that's going to be equal to then our numerator at the 225 and our denominator divided by the 150. let's add some decimals there we're going to go up top to the home numbers add a few decimals there's our 1.5 once again let's put an underline here home tab font group and underline so we've got to that that 1.5 again now there could be rounding differences and, and again this is the second one you kind of need two, uh, two, two periods in order to do that. You need a change to do that as opposed to, you know, the income statement where the contribution margin income statement with this format. But if I unhide these cells, put in my cursor from G to Q and right click and unhide, then these three formats, these are three ways that we got to that same degree of operating leverage. Here, these first two being similar, you know, in nature using the new format with that percentage change and this last one being the way we have seen it uh, in the past. So again, it kind of depends on the data that you have available to you either in a book problem or in practice, whether you have internal data where you can do a contribution margin income statement or whether you have the normal financial statements possibly where you can't as easily get a contribution margin income statement and maybe you can use the percent change uh, method in that situation.